um, happy Sabbath happy day. and happy day. Happy Can we all of us respond? Happy Sabbath happy day. and happy day. Happy yeah, indeed, it is a blessed Sabbath that the Lord has blessed us with. And um, I'm humble and privileged to stand before you just to take us uh, through a portion of what we've been learning throughout the week. Uh, for those who've been attending, you can indeed attest that it's been a blessing um, sharing those um, in this week youth of prayer. And um, as I can see, I have less than 22 minutes. And um, I pray that um, may the Lord help us to learn something. Um, because it's not something we can learn in 22 minutes without the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Yeah, so I, I pray that you wear in the mind of the youth that you may be able to decipher. Uh, a lot faster as we give time for Sabbath preparation. We don't want to interfere with um, your preparations um, so that we come to Sabbath early. I don't want to be quoted anywhere that um, has the time in preparations. Um, our topic today is lifting up the fallen in your city. Lifting up the fallen in your city. Uh, throughout the week, um, as the theme has been, is showing up in the cities, and it's about urban redemption. Um, youth have been called to do urban redemption, that is to go and minister unto the cities. And there are various aspects that we've been looking into, and we started by asking ourselves that um, if the Lord indeed loves our city. Then we moved on to the next that was talking about um, um, transforming the cities um, where Christ was being um, imaged as being the best and perfect example that we can emulate. Then on to tackle about the loneliness um, in, uh, in the city. Uh, we add, tackled also aspects that uh, deals with depressions and what leads actually to depression. We uh, looked into that because I remember Brother Stanley was sharing about uh, the challenges that we face in the city that are leading us to a loneliness and depression. We also looked at um, illnesses and how healthy we can keep ourselves in the city. Um, at times when we are in the city, we can develop fear and we learned uh, that the only person that we can depend upon is uh, the Lord. And now I want us to, um, amidst all this, I want us to focus our interest now on lifting the fallen who are in the city. It is, it is very unfortunate that um, the fallen, those who have been engaged, uh, engaged themselves in uh, things that are not pleasing the Lord, are finding uh, ourselves in the city. So, the call is that who will now respond to go and lift the fallen in the city. Our key verse is from the book of Matthew, the chapter is 11, and the verse is 19. I'll read from the New King, and it says, The Son of Man being king. And they say, and they say, Look, a glutton and a wine piper, a friend of, a tax, um, a friend of tax collectors and sins, but wisdom is justified by her children. Amen? Amen? Yeah. Um, it's very interesting that um, when you look at an urban setting or an, a city, we can see a lot of youth and the young adults um, who are broken-hearted. You know, they, they've been filled with a lot of 
anxieties and depression and they have broken hearts. The encounters in the city and the battles that we're fighting in the city because of the swift life has made the life in the city unbearable. And amidst all this, we look very desperate and we are very lonely. And amidst this, we find those who are broken are down there in the valley. But the problem, who is ready to go and rescue those who are down there in the valley? And we can start addressing this backwards because it could be that you are the one who is in that deep valley that we are talking about. A story is told of a lady who is called um, Maria. She's a 25-year-old and she finds herself in the city. She is in the city. Um, she um, gets to engage herself in drugs at a very young age. And slowly but surely, she drifts away from the uh, ways that she was uh, taught while she was young. And this led to a lot of things happening in her life. One, she lost her job. And she also lost relationships that he had with her friends around. The another, another thing that happened to this young lady is that her health deteriorated rapidly. And as you can see, she has been affected now both physically and emotionally. It's, it's, it's very stressing. I want, I want us to begin a reflection on this verse that we, um, we've, we've, we've uh, read. That is Matthew 11 and verse 19. That says, the son of man came eating and drinking. And they said, how, uh, what did they say? Look, a glutton and a drunkard. A friend of tax collectors and sinners. That is how they referred to Jesus. It could be possible that you're in church and in one way or another, you are very active. As Maria could go on her duty as well before drifting away, you could be in church and you could be going your normal uh, business as usual. But then, slightly, you find a temptation and you slip back. You could be holding a very high position or rank in wherever you are, especially in church, and you're leading people, and you slide back. People will call you names. They will call you everything. Like the expectations they had in you were very high. They could call you names. That is very okay. You could imagine if Christ were to come right now, who he could be associated with. Because here the scribes and the Pharisees are saying the Son of Man is eating and drinking, and they say, look, is a glutton and a drunkard and a friend or two who? to sinners. But unless we understand the purpose that the Lord has for us, we cannot know why he is taking part in drinking and eating with sinners and tax collectors. The very, very same purpose he had at that time is the very, very same purpose he has for the church today. You may be seated here and you need a savior right now. Why? Because you could be that tax collector, no direct tax collector. There is that thing that has enshrined you that you don't want to get out of. It's, it's a burden that you're call, carrying. But the Lord is saying he is ready to be agitated with you. For the Bible says he came for the sinners. And it is said from the same book, the Bible, that heavens are happy 
over one repentant sinner. It could be it could be that you are that sinner. The Lord is calling you with that still voice that you come out of your fallen nature. There are people who could be saying things to you. I don't want to say um, there are things that, you know, uh, bore you to be out of church or do things. But I know the main thing that can get into the veins of your heart is what people say about you. But what if you care what the Bible tells you? What, the, what does the Bible say about you? You know, the Bible says, you are my son, you are my daughter. I'm yearning for you. Come out of Babylon. Come out of your sins. Come unto the redemption. It's Christ who is calling us. There is one occasion that is given when um, the teachers of the law, they came with the woman who was an adulterous woman. They brought her to oh, Jesus. What did Jesus tell them? That whoever has not be the first one to, to throw a stone at her. How many did throw a stone at her. Unless we realize that we are crucifying others without looking deep into our hearts for repentance, then we are all doomed. All that we should pray is to have power over criticisms that people lay upon us. I know there are people who are very eloquent in, you know, making you feel bad. They are guilt charging you. They are making you feel like, you know, you are nothing. But remember that you were created in the image and likeness of who? God. So if they look down upon you, they are looking down upon the Lord who made you. Unless you look yourself at that uh, ankle, you will be the fallen. And you'll never, be, um, you'll never want to be the one who is fallen in, in that city. The Bible is telling us that the Lord knows his sheep that are scattered all around the earth. As a shepherd, you know when you are tending your flock and uh, especially those who've taken care of the sheep, if you happen to be brought up in the rural setting, you know, they, they, they tend to lose direction a, a, a lot. Like, you could be direct them to that direction, they want to go to this direction, right? So, the Lord knows that I have my sheep that are scattered all around the hearth. And, they, and he has a plan to redeem his um, sheep or the flock that he has scattered or around the earth. And what he does, Jesus, as a divine shepherd, he goes through the cities in search of the lost the broken, the fallen, and those with broken hearts so that he can restore them. You could be facing a lot of trauma. Could be your spouses, could be your girlfriends, could be your boyfriends, could be your family, that you're facing a lot of trauma, abuse, and, and all of that. The Lord is looking for you. And why I believe that Jesus is looking for you, the fallen, is the examples that I've given. Number one, he lifted up the adulterous woman. That is when you read in the book of John 8, 
1 through 11, that he found a woman trapped in adultery, and instead of condemning her, what did he say? He who is without a sin among you, let him throw a stone at her. The crowd that is now, you know, condemning you will not have a place to stand because we, are all, we have all fall, fallen short of glory and we need him as our redeemer. Number two, lifted up a paralytic at the pool of Bethsaida. You know, this man is pleading for how many uh, years? 38 years. You know, Jesus found this man who has been sick and bedridden for all those years. And he told him, rise. What did he tell him? Rise. Take up your bed and walk. I'm telling you today, Christ is telling you, rise. Take up your bed and walk. And that is instant healing from the Lord. Number three, he lifted up Zacchaeus, who is a tax collector. Remember, Zacchaeus is the one that people saw and associated Christ with sinners. But remember, Christ in main, Christ's main purpose of coming here on earth is to do, to do what? To reclaim back that sinner. So Zacchaeus was despised for his occupation as a tax collector. And his reputation is that he is a sinner. But God moved Zacchaeus. And he, he Zacchaeus, decided to give half of his goods to the poor and restore fourfold to those who he had defrauded. There is a change that happens when a repentant sinner comes to the Lord. And that should be, you know, evident. And be, it, it will be, it's, it's a fruit uh, that comes out when you repented and have come into recognition of a savior. And in, in each of these examples, what we've seen is Jesus demonstrating his ability to lift up the fallen and over them hope, and not just hope, but hope for eternity. You know, what the Bible teaches us always is that there is always an opportunity for forgiveness. There is always an opportunity for forgiveness. As long as probation has not closed, there is an opportunity for healing. There is an opportunity for transformation in his presence. So one day, uh, there are people who are walking in the city, and Pablo was one among them, and they met Maria. At first, Maria was very reluctant in, you know, receiving the message that this event, uh, uh, this Adventist church who were doing ministry were bringing unto her. Because there were young people who were doing um, a ministry to the young adults and the young people too. So, uh, Pablo approached her with kindness and love. Mark those words. That he approached her with kindness and, and love. You know, you can see a sister or a brother who has faltered, but the approach that you give them will not bring them into the fold, but it will scatter them further away from where they even are. So take note on how we approach those who have fallen away from the fold of God. Now, what Pablo did, he approached her with kindness and support. They offered a safe haven and assistance in facing her problems. Amen. They gave that atmosphere to her. You know, despite now the initial skepticism, Maria decided to give this a helping hand. You know, sometimes someone just says, let me just try this way. Because nobody likes to be in that situation. Maybe they have tried and they have. Now that 
that you've come. Now let me try your option. And that is what Maria did. Now over, over the following months, Maria um, began to rebuild her life. She received Bible studies and more importantly, what I'm emphasizing is emotional support, counseling, and help to overcome our addiction of drugs. And that took time. Because you can realize it's months. And we normally do a mission or a crusade for just a week or two. But now this took months. And there was that, you know, interaction back and forth that fostered her to overcome the addiction. Of course, I know there was much prayer that was involved. So finally, he regained her confidence and the skills she also found. Are the, because at first she realized she lost a job. When I began the story, I told you that she lost a job. But finally, again, she regained her job back. And what she did from this point was building a healthy relationship with her family and friends. You know, it has reinstated her back to her state and even exceeded because of the kindness that these people, uh, the kindness and love that these people came to minister to her, gave her. Today, Maria is a living testimony of how a second chance can change someone's life. So let's be people who can approach others who have fallen with kindness and love. Empathize with them. Don't join in a quorum of people who are condemning others. It is very wrong. Because only one is righteous. And we can attain righteous through him. And that is Jesus Christ. As we come unto a realization that we need Christ, let us pray for one another. If a friend calls you and you tell them, I'm going to pray for you, and you just eat and sleep, you've committed a sin unto yourself. You'd rather tell them, I'll tell someone to pray for you. But take that initiative to do what? To pray for that person. He or she knows why he made that call to you or she made that call to you. She knows that, or he knows that, you'll do what? You'll pray for them. And maybe there are other helpless points that they cannot pray. Sometimes through observation, you can see what someone needs. You don't need them, uh, to, them to come on to you to ask, it, uh, to ask for it. Just do your part. You could be answering a prayer that they, they have been praying for some time. And through that, the Lord will be praised. I pray this Sabbath that, they may, that may the Lord help you to come through the fallen. Yeah. I've kept quiet that you may digest that. that. May the Lord help you to come through the fallen. It's my prayer in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, Thank you for teaching us that we need you the most. Lord in heaven, as we showing up for the fallen and as others will be showing for us, we pray that you may give us strength, give us wisdom, give us kindness, give us love, give us empathy, give us the spirit of a perfect example, Jesus Christ, our oh God. Thank you for this Sabbath. It's the only day that you hallowed and put it asunder, apart that we may be able to worship, O oh God. Help us, O oh God, to worship you in truth and in spirit this Sabbath. As you're blessing others, we pray that you may not pass us, O oh God. Those who are following uh, through the online 
a platform. So God, we pray for them. You know what they want. You know the desires of their hearts. Lord in heaven, we pray that your will be done unto us, O God. As young adults, we may be facing these difficulties in the city, O God. We may be wanting to spread your word, but there are obstacles in our way. We pray that we may come through. Remove those obstacles that we may be able to accomplish your work. That when you come in the second time, we'll be able to glorify you at the midst of the clouds as we march to heaven that you've been pre preparing for us, O God. Be with us now and forevermore. What is our prayer? In Jesus' name I pray and believe. Amen. Amen. the next team comes next team, which has already come out. The team for next year is transforming the community. So before we go to transform the community, we need to continue transforming the city or showing up in the city. The city might be your family. The city might be your friends. The city might be your workplace. The city might be that charma where you go. The city might be the university where you go to learn. So cities are many. The city might be your neighbors. So please show up. Don't say that I can't go to Nairobi city and help those who are there. People who are needy and close to you, that is your city. And that is why God has put you there to show up to those people so that they can know that God exists. So I want to wish you all uh, a good evening as we are going to discuss from here. I wish you all a good evening.